Hey guys, Snoozy here, and today we're going to be going over how to level a trap assassin. Now, realistically, this guide is also how I leveled as a mosaic sin, um, but you still use traps to level. So we're going to go ahead and get straight on into it and starting with your stats. Now, keep in mind, almost everything in this video that's talking about items, runes, stats, skills, it's going to be in the description of the video too. That way you don't have to keep going back trying to find the exact levels to do everything in. Uh, but we're going to get started with your stats. Generally, for level 2 and level 3, I like to put them into energy. So give you a little bit more maximum mana and a little bit more mana regen. Levels 4 to 10, we're going to go straight into vitality to make sure you're a little bit more beefy. Level 11, we're going to go ahead and do 5 points into strength. From level 12 to 21, we're also going to do straight vitality. Now, this is going to get a little tricky here. From levels 22 to 25, we're going to put in more strength. Now, if you have at level 26 that you're just already ready for, for a crystal sword, uh, you're going to want to make sure you either have 43 or 48 if you're not going to be using a crystal sword based strength. This is going to be for your spirit. Now, if you don't have this, that's okay, because technically we're not actually going to use the spirit until Act 4 Nightmare, so you'll have more time to get your strength. And on top of that, I like to get up to about 60 strength, that way I can get 4 slots in my belt. So you can feel free to change these stats around a little bit. Maybe you just want to dump everything into strength and then do your vitality. It's all up to you. I wouldn't worry about it. If you're following my guide for leveling, you're going to respec anyways. So if you screw this part up, you can fix it in the second half. Won't be a big deal. Now, for your skills, we're going to use the den for your plus one skill. And we're going to go ahead and put that into your claw mastery. This is just a prerequisite so we can get to the burst of speed. From levels 2 to 5, we're going to go ahead and put the points into Fire Blast, just for the straight up damage. On top of that, this actually does a decent amount of damage while you're leveling, and your lower levels are reasonably smooth while leveling with this, honestly. Now keep in mind, this and traps are going to be based off of your attack speed. So generally what I do at level 1 or level 2, or really if you just find one, Look for like the fastest attack speed that you can find, and I generally run around with the dagger. You can go ahead and look up the different attack speed modifiers on stuff, like these items here, on you know whatever your favorite IAS calculator is. But generally, I just pick up a dagger, and I'll use that. Once you are level 6, you're going to go ahead and put in a point in the burst of speed. And level 7, you're going to put another burst of speed in here. This is great because it's going to make it last longer. Your attack speed is going to go up, making it easier to hit breakpoints for laying down traps. And run walk speed at this level is absolutely amazing. Level 8, we're going to go back and put another one into Fire Blast for some additional damage. Levels 9 to 11, we're going to go do burst of speed again. Level 12 is where it starts getting interesting. And we'll go ahead and get our first actual trap that you lay down, which will be Wake of Fire. We're going to be leveling as Fire Trap for this build until Act 4 Nightmare, in which case we will respec. So, for now, you're going to be Fire. Uh, once you have that, level 12 to 14 is going to be Wake of Fire. Radiment Quest is going to go back into your Fire Blast. And you'll just kind of continue on there, generally getting more and more points into Wake of Fire as needed. And then getting your synergies into Wake of Inferno as well. Now, at higher levels, if you don't feel quite safe, I generally don't do this until I respec. Cloak of Shadows and Mind Blast are absolutely insane for leveling. I don't get these until I respec in Act 4 Nightmare, though. But if you'd rather have these while leveling, make sure you save some skill points to get these. Now, since you're leveling from scratch, this guide's going to be assuming a ladder start, so I'm not going to be showing you a lot of these really nice leveling uniques like low-level boots with run walk, stuff like that. I'm going to show you stuff that you can reliably get. Good day. We're going to start off with the Leaf Staff here. Now, keep in mind that we don't get anything like Fireball or Warmth and any of that stuff, right? 
We're only looking for these plus three to fire skills. That's what we're looking for here. And the reason for that is our fire traps are fire skills. So we'll get plus three levels. You're not really going to get any more damage than that early game. Uh, unless you get lucky with an insane claw, which are pretty rare. So reliably, this is going to be your best, and especially at level 19 requirement. Uh, I would highly recommend getting the Leaf Staff. For your armor, it's going to be Stealth. You don't have to put it in Studded Leather. You can put it really in any two-socketed armor that you find, um, as long as you're going to have the Strength requirement for it. Generally, this and the Staff and your Helmet, you can reliably purchase from the Act 1 as you're leveling through it. So with your low levels, make sure you kind of stop by and see if they have these. Um, your helmet will be a lore helmet, which does require a soul rune, so you do have to get a bit lucky to get that early. And on top of that, you might want to hold off on making the lore first. And you, the reason for that is we're going to have the insight, but you're going to need a four-socketed poleaxe or a polearm class in general, which can be a little tricky to get at lower levels. I would recommend getting your soul here first especially if you're playing solo it'll help a lot with your mana situation the second stall i would recommend here for your lore if you haven't found anything better because you do get a plus one to all skills now if you're having problems with your resistances ancient's pledge is a great shield you can put this in any three socketed shield uh if you do the act five second quest where you save the barbarians You'll actually re be rewarded with Rao or Tau, so you'll reliably get all three of these, and you just put them in the shield. Now, you might be asking, well, how do I reliably get these runes? Generally, by the time I get to Black Marsh, I'll go down and farm Countess, usually until about level 12, but it's more until I get the runes. You're going to want to get a Tur Rao and a Tau F at minimum. If you're following this, these two alone will really help. The run walk and the faster hit recovery from the stealth is really nice. Also, try to pick up Ort runes. Ort runes are going to be great. You will need one for the lore, and then you'll need one over here for your Ancient's Pledge. But keep in mind, you can get all three of these runes for the quest reward, so you don't need to farm Countess for these. You'll want to try to keep your eye out for a four socketed crystal sword and Talthal or Am. You're not going to be using this until we respec, but you're going to want to try to find this early on because you do need that four socketed crystal sword. It doesn't have to be a crystal sword, it could be any one handed sword that you want, but you might need more strength points or dexterity depending on which one you do pick. So it's really important about that you make sure you're looking for these items. Now, that's going to be the actual gear that you're going to use. Now, some other items that are going to be really helpful, and keep in mind, these, this item and the wand, they're both edited in in a single player. These do exist. However, they're going to have higher level requirements and different stats and prefixes and stuff. But I just wanted to show you the charges that you are looking for. And the first one up is going to be the teleport staff. The best way to get this, in my opinion, is going to be around Act 3. Uh, level 20 or so, if you go to Ormus, he might sell you one of these. It's super useful um, for getting around and really speeds up your run. Um, level 30 to 35, you're going to look for lower resistance wands. You can find those from Akara or Drogon, so Act 1 or Act 2. And generally around level 30 to 35, you want to shop for these. Now for either of these, I really don't just sit there and reset shop. Uh, it's probably the smart move if you're playing solo. I just kind of check them as I go for pots. Uh, it's really up to you if you want to kind of farm these or not. I generally skip them if I don't find them. On top of that, you're also going to want to be keeping chip gems and your ort rune. And the reason for this is the more you start using these, especially the teleport, it's going to slam your gold. Because when you try to repair these, it's going to cost a lot. So notice how we've used a couple of the charges out of here. It's 55 at 60. If you put an Ort Rune plus the Chip Gem in here and Transmute, it'll take those. And it'll go all the way back up to a fully charged uh, item. So keep your Chip Gems early on if you're planning on picking these up. It's going to make it really nice for you. Now, the reason that we're only going to be using the Fire stuff and we're not equipping the Spirit Sword at level 25. You can if you want, if you would like the faster hit recovery. 
I and the life and the mana, it wouldn't be a bad idea, but I generally just keep playing with the leaf staff and pushing through. If you want to stop and farm for the spirit and the insight, you could swap to those. And that would also give you some more resistances to help out. If you are playing hardcore, uh, this guide really isn't meant for you. But my recommendation would probably be getting points into Fade more so than Burst of Speed. But I'm not a hardcore player. So if you are playing hardcore, you might want to look at other content creators for it. Like I said, this guide is going to be for softcore. However, I have done this on hardcore and just went for the Fade rather than the Burst of Speed. was slower, but it did work. Now, what's going to happen once you go ahead and you hit Act 4 in Nightmare? It's important. It's Nightmare you want to respec. And that's because that's when you're going to start getting a lot of fire immunes. You're going to want to respec. And here you have a couple options. We'll be going Lightning Traps for the rest of the leveling process. So, if you're thinking of staying Lightning and you're not going to respec out all the them like Mosaic or another build like that, and you're going to stay Lightning Traps. There's a couple options here. For your weapons that you're going to use, you're either going to be looking for a three-socketed crystal sword, or you'll be looking for a three-socketed phase blade. Phase blade is better, but uses more stat points. Crystal sword uses less, but it's harder to hit trap lane break points with it. Phase blade has a higher attack speed, so your break points are easier to hit. So you want to keep that in mind and pick up either a three-socketed crystal or a three-socketed phase blade, and you'll eventually make them into a crescent moon if you plan on staying traps for a long time. That's all going to be more covered in the other trap assassin guide I have, since I consider that more of an endgame activity rather than a leveling. But since you are leveling, I thought I'd bring it up here. That way you can keep your eye out for them and you don't have to buy one later on. But back to the Act 4 respec, you'll be switching into Lightning Sentry. It'll be the same thing, one point into Claw Mastery, and then your Burst of Speed points. And I really like getting Mind Blast, especially on ladder starts. Mind Blast is insane for the stun length. Cloak of Shadows is amazing for the blind. You can really make soul Black Souls struggle to hit you or even shoot with putting Cloak of Shadows down. And Mind Blast is really nice, especially once you start getting into like Act 3 if you're solo and you're trying to kill council members that are immune to lightning. You can stun lock them in the corner if you're using your spirit and you have a little bit of a cast speed just by using mind blast on them over and over and over and over and then your mercenary can slowly whittle them down if they're immune to lightning but other than those we'll go ahead and put the one point into fire blast and you'll go all the way down on the left side of the tree here into death sentry for one point on all of these you'll want to be maxing lightning sentry first and then your charge bolt sentry or shock web, depending on which one you'd rather use. Shock web's probably better just because you could also do shock web plus lightning sentry, whereas a charge sentry would take a slot that you'd be using for your lightning sentry. Once all three of these are maxed, you'll move into the death sentry and then later on to the fire blast. So that's really it for leveling the Trap Assassin. The routes are pretty simple. You're going to play through the game utilizing items like lower resistance charges or teleport charges really are going to speed it up for you. Um, there's a lot of different tips and tricks that really work for all the classes, and I hope to make videos on those later on for the actual routes and stuff like that. But the only real change from a standard gameplay here is I would really make sure you're farming your Tal Eth and your Tur Ral. And looking for a two-socketed helmet, two-socketed armor, and two-socketed staff. Again, the stats that spawn on these do not matter. So if you go down to Akara here, and you're trying to buy a staff, right there, boom. Look at that, 168 gold, and you have your base. We're, and we are a trap assassin, so Frost Nova, Charge Bolts, Fireball, stuff like that doesn't matter. The only thing that you might care about is if you do find a staff somewhere, and there's none in here, but let's say this staff instead of Frostbolt, it was two to Fireball and like one to Firebolt. It might be worth paying the upcharge on this just in case you do play a Fire Sorceress at some point because that would be a really decent base for you. But you could just go with that first one, which was just plain two socketed. 
And that is how I level my Trap Assassin solo. Hopefully that guys helps you. Like I said, all the, most of the info about the runes, what levels to do XYZ, stuff like that, I'm going to put it in the description for you. I'm also going to link the guide that I made for Endgame. That way you can see how it transitions and how it plays at Endgame, the gear requirements, the stat points, and stuff like that. Uh, it's really up to you uh, when you respec on how you want to handle your stat points. If you're going straight into the phase blade, you're going to need more dex. If you're just going to use the crystal sword for a bit uh, and you don't need the dex, then you will just dump the rest into vitality once you hit your strength limits. Um, but more of that will be covered in the actual guide itself. So I hope this is useful to you guys. I hope you guys can see a little bit on how this plays out. And yeah. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I try to stream every day. Pretty bad at that. So catch me when I'm live. Subscribe. You get the notifications and all that jazz. If you can't catch me when I'm live, leave a comment. I really do try to answer every single comment or question that's posted on the videos. So if you leave a question, I will try to get back to you. It might take me a day or two. Um, but I do make an actual effort to try and see that for you guys. So hope this helped. Talk to you guys later. Bye.